Welcome to another exciting episode of Our Money. Today, we're going to dive into the fascinating history of the $2 silver certificate, an interesting story that involves unexpected twists, turns, and acts of Congress. Our journey starts on April 1, 1873, when the Coinage Act, or the Mint Act, came into effect. However, here's a twist, this act failed to authorize silver dollars, which led to a collapse in the value of silver, an event popularly known as the Crime of 73. Fast forward to 1876, Nevada and Colorado, states accounting for over 40% of the world's silver mining at the time, started championing a new law. As a result, Congress approved the Bland Allison Act on February 28, 1878, even though President Hayes vetoed it. This law mandated the Treasury to purchase between two and four million dollars of silver every month from mining companies in the western states to be minted into coins. It also allowed individuals to deposit silver coins at the Treasury in sums not less than ten dollars, and in return, they would receive certificates of the same value. Thus, the first silver certificates, ranging from ten to a thousand dollars, came into circulation. In 1886, the General Appropriations Act empowered the Treasury to release silver certificates of smaller denominations. This paved the way for the first $2 silver certificate, with the portrait of Civil War General Winfield Scott Hancock beginning its fascinating journey as the series of 1886. This series showcases five variations and three signature combinations. The first note was adorned with the signatures of Register William Rosecrans and Treasurer Conrad Jordan at the base of the note. Subsequent notes showed signature duos Rosecrans and James Hyatt, and Rosecrans and James Houston, each with distinctive variations including the hue and dimensions of the Treasury seal. With serial numbers inked in blue, the note displays that act of August 4, 1886 to the left. The main text reads, this certifies that there have been deposited in the Treasury of the United States two silver dollars payable to the bearer on demand. On the reverse side, an artful rendering, in the classic green, identifies the note as a United States silver certificate, with a promise that the certificate is receivable for customs, taxes, and all public dues, and when so received may be reissued. In the series of 1891, the $2 note underwent a complete redesign now featuring the late Secretary of the Treasury, William Wyndham, who tragically died in office earlier that year. Now, this note featured two signature combinations. First, Register Rosecrans and Treasurer Enos Nebaker, and next up, Register James Tillman paired with Treasurer Daniel Morgan. Despite the makeover, the primary text retains its original promise. The serial numbers remain in blue, and the Treasury seal, smaller in size, dons a vibrant shade of red. Flip the note to reveal an artfully rearranged reverse. The text stays the same, but its placement receives a refreshing update. As we continue our journey, the year 1896 ushers in a new era for the $2 silver certificate. In this momentous year, the series of 1896, also referred to as the educational notes, make their grand entrance. Why educational notes? Well, the answer lies in their breathtaking design often hailed as the Treasury's most artistic and visually appealing series to date. On this exquisite note, the figure of science introduces two children, symbols of steam and electricity, to the grown-up world of commerce and manufacture. It's a visual story of progress, of transformation, beautifully captured in ink and paper. Though the note's obligation and serial numbers remain untouched, the Treasury seal now boasted a brighter red and tiny rays adorning its edges. The Act of August 4, 1886, finds a new home at the lower right of the note. You'll find two signature combinations. The first pairing features Register Tillman and Treasurer Morgan, while the second features Register Blanche Bruce and Treasurer Ellis Roberts. Flip the note, and you'll see a completely overhauled reverse. The educational series introduces dual portraits on the back of the note. Here we see Robert Fulton the genius behind the first commercially successful steamboat, sharing space with Samuel Morse, the trailblazing inventor of the telegraph. The final redesign came with the series of 1899, now featuring George Washington flanked by mechanics and agriculture. Adding a noticeable touch is the newly introduced stylized blue number two, adorning the left of the note. Now the treasury seal and serial numbers also stand out in blue. An incredible 10 signature combinations grace this series, 
giving rise to 20 known variants. From Judson Lyons and Roberts, followed by Lyons and Charles Treat, William Vernon and Treat, Vernon and Lee McClung, James Napier and McClung, Napier and Carmi Thompson, Gabe Parker and John Burke, Houston Teehee and Burke, William Elliott and Burke, and finalizes with Register Harley Spielman and Treasurer Frank White, creating a rich tapestry of historical signatures. A significant transformation regarding the serial numbering of U.S. currency took place during the terms of Register Vernon and Treasurer McClung. In 1910, the Treasury introduced a system known as Star Notes. This innovation was introduced as a solution to handle misprinted, or error notes. Prior to this, when printing mistakes were identified, the flawed notes would be discarded, disrupting the sequential order of the serial numbers. To address this, the Treasury started replacing these error notes with new ones that had a serial number starting or ending with a star. The introduction of star notes enabled the Treasury to maintain the integrity of the serial number sequence, effectively filling the gaps created by printing errors. This allowed for a more accurate count of notes within a particular serial number run, and ensured that the sequential order of the currency was maintained despite any printing errors. With the series of 1899, the reverse also got another creative makeover while keeping the original text intact. On the 23rd of April, 1918, Congress passed the Pittman Act, which allowed for up to 350 million silver dollars to be melted and turned into bullion. This bullion was then either sold off or used to create smaller silver coins. Additionally, the act required the buying of domestic silver to mint a similar amount of silver dollars. As a unique way to control the amount of money in the country, the Pittman Act required that for every silver dollar turned into bullion, a similar value of silver certificates had to be temporarily taken out of circulation. However, printing of series of 1899 continued up to the late 1920s. When the Treasury began issuing small-size silver certificates after 1928, the $2 note was noticeably absent. Thus, the series of 1899 represented the last $2 silver certificates to be issued. We hope you've enjoyed our dive into the captivating world of the $2 silver certificate. And remember, stay curious.